Hey everybody, it's Chef Matt Abdu from Pig Beach Barbecue in New York City and happy National Grilling Day. Today we're going to be serving up for you these incredibly delicious and simple grilled boneless pork chops served with a peach and white balsamic glaze that couldn't be more delicious and couldn't be easier. And I know that everybody at home will be able to do this recipe. So come on in and let's get started. The first thing we're going to need is to make is our glaze. And it couldn't really be easier because all it takes is just these few simple ingredients to make this perfect, delicious peach and white balsamic glaze that's gonna go with our pork chops. Peaches for me represent summer. Summer for me is grilling, and here it is. We're starting off with one cup of fresh peach puree. If you can't find fresh peaches, or if you wanna do this not during the summertime, you certainly can substitute some canned peaches for this recipe, which will work perfectly okay. Next, we have a half a cup of white balsamic vinegar. Again, if you can't find white balsamic, no problem whatsoever. Certainly substitute a white wine vinegar or even an apple cider vinegar or a distilled white vinegar will work just well. We have a half a cup of just some regular ketchup, three tablespoons of some light brown sugar, three tablespoons of clover honey. We have a half a teaspoon of granulated garlic and a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger. So the first thing we're gonna do is just combine all these ingredients into our small sauce pot. And that's where we're gonna go. So we're gonna take our white peach puree, or our peach puree. If you can find white peaches, those will work just as well also. Put that into our bowl. To that, we're gonna add our white balsamic. Simple enough, right? See, not so bad so far. And our half a cup of regular old ketchup. Ketchup always works really well when you're making a glaze because it acts as a thickener as well as a sweetener. That's a really great thing to use when you're making these glazes for your pork chops. Have to add a little sweetness, and what better sweetness to go with pork than light brown sugar? We're gonna add that all right in. Our three tablespoons of clover honey right into our pot. And then last but not least, we're gonna add in our aromatics, our granulated garlic and our ground ginger. That's gonna go right on into the pot. So we're gonna take all that, we're gonna give it a quick, simple mix. Get all these ingredients together, and then we're gonna transfer it regular, right over to our grill, actually. If you wanna do this on a stove top inside, you certainly can, or if your grill has one of those side burners on the side, you can absolutely do that as well. But we're gonna take this, because we're outside and it's National Grilling Day, we're gonna take this pot, after it's all mixed together, put it right on our grill, and we're gonna let it simmer for about 10 to 12 minutes or until it achieves that desired consistency we're looking for for our glaze, as well as that flavor to develop all the sweetness and everything within it. So we're gonna take it right over to our grill, Put it on about a medium high heat on that side and we're just gonna let it slowly simmer until it gets to the place where we want it to be. And I promise you this is going to be absolutely delicious. This glaze is gonna yield about a cup and a half worth of sauce to which we're gonna use half of it to glaze up our pork chops and the other half we're gonna use it for a delicious dipping sauce when our pork chops are finished, done grilling and all cooked up ready to eat. So while our peach and white balsamic glaze is cooking up and getting to that beautiful consistency and flavor that we're looking for, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our brine. Now, brine is something that can be just simply as simple as water, salt, and sugar. And then if you wanted to, you could certainly add aromatics to it, like maybe some bay leaves, some peppercorns, some thyme, some rosemary, or anything you really want to add to the flavor of it. But what's magical about brine is that it actually adds moisture and seasoning within the meat. And that makes a moister, juicier, and more flavorful pork chop when it's done cooking off our grill. So what I like to do is I take one quart or four cups worth of just cold water, to that, we have a half a cup of granulated sugar and a half a cup of kosher salt. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take the salt and the sugar, we're gonna add it into our water, really simply like that. And we're just gonna whisk this all up until eventually the solution is going to turn crystal clear. And if it doesn't turn clear right away, it's okay. It's just gonna take a minute for all the salts and the sugars to dissolve. But this simple little brine ratio right here is perfect for pork. And it's gonna really add so much flavor and moisture to your pork chops after they're done grilling that it's definitely a step that you don't wanna skip when doing your National Grilling Day pork chops or any grilling day for that matter. So while this is all whisked together, I'm gonna to simply just set it aside for a moment. It's gonna take a couple minutes, but eventually it will turn crystal clear. And then while that's turning clear and completely dissolving, the next thing we're gonna do is show you our whole boneless pork loin and to butcher it to make our beautiful one and a half inch thick boneless pork ribeye chops. All right, so our peach and white balsamic glaze is cooking away, our brine is made. The next thing we do is to take our whole boneless pork loin and break it down into our one and a half inch thick boneless ribeye chops. So here over here I have 
this beautiful whole boneless pork loin. And one of the reasons why I love cooking and using boneless pork loin so much is because it has such economic value, the flavor is absolutely incredible, and there's so much versatility with it and so many different things that we can do with this that it really makes cooking an absolute joy. Also too, you can take this pork loin, we're certainly not gonna be using it all for this one recipe, and we can take it and basically break it down into four components, put them in Ziploc bags, throw them in the freezer, and then pull them as we need them. So the end of the pork loin, which you can see here, the end that's a little bit more thinner, that has less fat and cap on this side is what's referred to as the sirloin end, and on this side is what's referred to as that sort of ribeye end of the pork chop, going from something closer to the head down further to the tail. Now, every aspect of this pork loin is completely delicious, completely edible, and completely usable, but uh, certain the, certainly the ribeye end of it has a little bit more marbling, a little bit more fat, and a little bit more flavor, and thus that's why I love using it for this recipe. But if you want to use a sirloin end and have more of a New York strip style pork chop or something that's a little bit leaner and more eye, you can certainly use that end as well. So what I'm going to do first here is I'm going to take this pork loin roast and I'm just going to simply cut it in half to make two pieces. <clears throat> I'm then going to take that half and just take this and set it aside. We can certainly tie this up, make a boneless pork loin roast with it. We can butterfly it. We can really do anything we want with this. This is a delicious cut of meat, but for now we're just going to set it aside. What's remaining here, I'm gonna cut this part in half and basically break it down into two roasts. And what I wanna show you, if you can see, this is what's referred to as the pork ribeye chop because you can see it has that sort of spinalis or that cap on top of the meat. And it also has a little bit of that dark meat that's right on this part of the pork, which has that super moisture and incredible flavor. So this is the end that I'm gonna work with. And we're gonna cut this into one and a half inch thick boneless pork ribeye chops, which is gonna be absolutely dynamite for this grilled uh, peach and white balsamic recipe. So this roast here as well is something we can certainly save and use and tie up or cut later. We can pre-cut it into chops, put it in the freezer and pull it when we need it. All delicious, perfectly edible stuff we wanted to set aside and save. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this part of the pork roast and we're just gonna cut it into nice, big, thick chops because when I'm entertaining, when I'm cooking for my friends, family, and loved ones, I love having that nice, big, hearty pork chop that's gonna be on my plate that people are just gonna be like, oh my God, look at the size of this thing. It's incredible, it's so good. Everyone eats with their eyes first, so we wanna definitely give them that sort of wow factor in the pork chop. So we're gonna take this, one last cut, and you can see here we have these gorgeous, really thick, beautiful, boneless pork ribeye chops, which is absolutely gonna wow your guests when it's time to eat. So now that our brine is made, we're gonna take these pork ribeye chops, boneless pork ribeye chops, we're gonna place them into a Ziploc bag, I love doing this because it makes cleanup and it makes the brine super easy and you don't need to fuss with any sort of container to put it in. So we're gonna take our chops, put them right into a Ziploc bag, gallon size Ziploc bag, or any sort of sealable plastic bag. Last one. And we're gonna take our brine and you can see how the brine has turned pretty much completely clear. There's a little bit of sediment on the bottom that will just whisk up and that'll certainly go away. But that's the point where we wanna be right here. So we're now gonna take this brine pour it right over the top of our boneless pork ribeye chops. And we're gonna put this in our refrigerator and allow it to brine for at least one hour or overnight. But you don't wanna do it less than an hour because it's not gonna fully saturate the meat and you don't wanna do it more than a day or else it's gonna to start to cure the pork and we really don't want that. So at this point, we're gonna take this, put it in the refrigerator, wait an hour and come back till we're ready to go to start seasoning and grilling up and glazing up our boneless pork ribeye chops. So an hour later to overnight, we're gonna take our pork chops out of that incredibly simple brine. We're gonna put them on a plate. We're gonna pat them dry. Very important that we pat them dry to get rid of all that excess moisture on the outside. Removing that excess moisture is gonna help us get those perfect, beautiful grill marks that we really wanna have when we're, for the aesthetics when we're cooking our pork. So the next thing is, is we're gonna season it just simply with salt and pepper. It's really that easy. Here I have two teaspoons of kosher salt and one teaspoon of ground black pepper. All we're gonna do is just take it and really quickly and easily mix it all together to make a little pepper little all-purpose seasoning if you'd like. And to here, guys, if you want to like jazz it up a little bit more, you can certainly add a little bit of garlic powder or granulated garlic or a little onion powder or granulated onion or anything to that that you'd love to have the seasoning flavor profile of and create your own sort of signature rub. But salt and pepper works just perfectly fine when we're grilling pretty much anything out there on our grill. So we're gonna take this seasoning and we're gonna season all around and all over these boneless pork ribeye chops. And I'm already salivating. This is going to be so good, guys. I'm so excited to share this recipe for you, with you. And I'm excited for you to cook it at home as well. I'm going to give it a flip. Make sure we get all sides of our pork seasoned. Very important. Don't skimp on the seasoning. 
make it rain from up high. I think that's another great pro tip, guys. Whenever you're seasoning, you always want to season from up high. That way the seasoning evenly falls onto the meat. You don't want to get super close because if you do that, it's going to end up having pockets of seasoning. So you want to be at least six to eight inches above the pork and really from up high, just let it naturally fall as if it came down from the heavens onto our meat. And you can see that's just a perfect amount of seasoning to fully season all of our pork chops. And if you want to, even at this stage, you could let the seasoning sit on here just for a minute or so to really let the salt start to permeate the meat. It's gonna to start to sweat a little bit. And then from this point here, we're gonna take our pork and bring it right on over to our grill, where we're gonna get prepared to make sure that it's nice and oiled and super hot to get those perfect grill marks. All right, everybody, so things are looking really good. We have our pork loin, our boneless pork ribeye chops that have been broken down, they've been brined, patted dry, seasoned. We have our amazing peach and white balsamic glaze simmering away. It's about another few more minutes. It's going to be perfectly exactly where we want to be with it. It's looking really, really great. The viscosity is exactly where we want it to be. And it smells absolutely incredible. You're going to absolutely love this when it goes on the pork chops. So the next thing is grill maintenance. I can't stress enough, guys. Whenever you're cooking, it's very important to always do two things when you're first grilling. First, we need to clean it. Any sort of grill brush that you might have, they sell these in different, many different kinds and many different variations. Just gonna take it and really generously clean our grill grates. Very important step that you can't miss. And the next that I love to do is always spray our grill grates with a little bit of nonstick spray. But here's a pro tip. When you are spraying your grill and it's already hot, what I like to do first is take all of our burners and turn them off. The reason why we're gonna do this is so that when we spray the grill spray onto the grill grates, it's not gonna create a big flare up. You are gonna get a little bit of smoke that's gonna come off from the heat of the oil burning, but that's exactly what you want to season the grates, which is gonna make the pork release and not stick really, really well. So now that our burners are off, we're gonna just take some of our grill spray, just give it a quick little spray onto the area of which we're gonna be cooking. You can see a little smoke comes up, but that's totally okay. And now we're gonna relight our burners. Since I have this gas grill with an automatic ignition, it's just super easy for me just to turn the burners back on, press the button and boom, there we go. So at this point in stage of cooking our pork chops, what I like to do, our grill grates have been on really, really hot heat. As hot as it'll go, we're then going to take the pork chops and we're gonna rest them at a 45 degree angle right on the grill grates to get ourselves these perfect grill marks. Now, when we're grilling, what I like to do is I always like to set a timer. And the timer being for, so that I can make sure that the grill marks are gonna be completely even and completely consistent throughout the cooking process of these pork chops. So let's say we start a timer for two minutes and what we're gonna do from here on out is after two minutes, we're gonna rotate the pork chops 90 degrees and that's gonna give us those perfect, beautiful hash marks. And then after that two minutes, a total cook time of four minutes in, we're gonna give it a flip and repeat that same process. But this time on the backside, we're gonna start glazing it up with this remarkable peach and white balsamic glaze that's gonna add so much flavor to these pork chops. So while the timer is set and they're cooking away, I think anything peach, apple, or that little bit of sweetness just, just goes so incredibly well with the pork chops that it's definitely something that you can do uh, throughout the summertime and the season that really sort of accentuates that summertime love of bringing the friends, family, and loved ones together to the dinner table. And I can promise you when they do come for this recipe, they're gonna be blown away at how delicious it actually is. And then when you show them how simple it is to actually make, they're gonna be also wowed incredibly. Another very important thing to note that whenever we're cooking, this is probably one of my most important tools when cooking on the grill for any sort of protein particularly pork, where we're wanting to meet that 145 degree doneness mark. That's the perfect mark where we're gonna make sure that the pork has beautiful moisture within it, and it's not gonna be overcooked, but it's gonna be cooked to the point where it's safe to eat within that perfect money zone of 145 degrees. And you won't be able to do that without an instant read thermometer. I love the digital thermometers because they give you a reading pretty much in seconds, and they're super consistent, and you'll never miss a temperature on any one of your proteins or your pork chops ever again. It'll consistently and perfectly be cooked done in the right way every single time without guessing. And since I've been a young cook, there's a thousand of different ways out there to try to, that people have taught you how to test if a piece of meat is done, you make a fist, if it's a firm fist, if you make a loose fist. I don't believe in any of that. I think that creates just a variable for error that's uncontrollable because my fist and the strength of which I'm closing my fist is gonna be different from everybody else's. So using a thermometer takes all that variable out and will give you a perfect and consistent reading every single time. So we're in through our cooking process. It's been about two minutes. The next thing I'm gonna do is take our pork chops and we're just gonna give them, and I have a, a fork, if you have a pair of tongs or whatever you're comfortable using on the grill, certainly use it. But I'm just gonna take a fork, I'm gonna take our pork chop, I'm gonna pick it up, I'm gonna cross it to get 90 degree marks on it. And when I pick it up, 
what I like to do is move it to place it on a part of the grill that has not been touched so that it's super hot and conducts all that really great heat. So we're going to let these pork chops continue to cook for another two minutes until it's time to flip them and then we're going to start glazing them up. All right, so we're about four minutes now into cooking these boneless pork ribeye chops. It's time for us to flip them over and begin that basting process to get that peach and white balsamic glaze really stick and get nice and tacky all over the meat. So what we're gonna do is just take a fork or a pair of tongs, whatever it is that you have and you're comfortable working with, and we're just gonna give them a good old flip. You can see we got some nice grill marks already starting to develop on that one side. A Little bit of char on that one, but that's okay. Get these nice, really great grill marks over there, just like that. And from this point, guys, this is the time we're gonna start again our two minute timer. And our peach and white balsamic glaze is at the point where it's really perfect consistency. We're just gonna start taking this and glazing the top side of our pork chops to have it cook on the meat that's gonna really cause it to get really nice and sticky and tacky on the outside and create this incredible flavor. And guys, when you're cooking, if you notice that one of your pork chops gets a little hard like that, it's okay, it's just gonna to add to the flavor. This is real time cooking, things are gonna happen. You know, not everyone's perfect. And I think that's an okay thing to understand because pork has that beautiful fat within it that cooks up and the chars up and the flavor of it is gonna be really, really spectacular when you bite in, into it, even if it gets a little over dark on you. All right, we're just gonna keep on basting all these. Nice, nice. That's what I'm talking about. So at this point in time, guys, when we're basting, the, the grill is pretty hot. So getting your hands over the top of it might be a little challenging. If you don't wanna use a spoon, you have a nice big long grill brush that you can just sort of baste onto it. That'll also work really incredibly well. And at this point, our barbecue glaze or our peach and white balsamic glaze is right where we want it to be. At this point now, I'm actually close the lid to our oven, our grill and turn it into an oven to let the pork chops continue to finish cooking to that magic number of 145 degrees. So we're gonna close the lid and we're gonna come on back in two minutes. Oh, there it is. You can already start to see that that glaze is starting to get nice and sticky and adhere to all of it. So we're gonna do one last turn of 90 degrees. Again, we're gonna lift it up Put it on a fresh spot in the grill, turning it 90 degrees to get those perfect grill marks on the other side. Just like that, one last turn. Let's give it one last base with some of this delicious peach and white balsamic glaze. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Getting all basted, nice and coated. That flavor is just really gonna make these pork chops shine. All right, we're gonna close the lid two more minutes and then dinner's gonna be on the table momentarily. Look at that. You can already start to see that glaze is really nice and sticking and adhering to the outside of that meat. We're gonna give it a quick temp. See where we are. Oh, I love it. 144 degrees, that's gonna carry up a couple more degrees, that's exactly where we wanna be, which is perfectly fine. We're gonna take them right off the grill. Just put them to our plate. Here we're serving them up just simply with some grilled peaches just to accentuate all that amazing flavor that's going to be in these pork chops. Oh yeah, there it is, just like that. One more, right off the grill. And we're gonna serve up a little bit more of that additional peach and white balsamic glaze right on the side. To let people put an extra scoop or so on their meat as they slice into it, because I promise you they're gonna to want to be finger licking every last drop of this amazing sauce. So there you have it guys, our peach and white balsamic glaze, boneless pork ribeye chops. I hope you're enjoying this beautiful day and get a chance to get and fire up your grills to try this recipe. I promise you it won't disappoint. So it's Matt Andrew guys from Pig Beach Barbecue New York City. Happy National Grilling Day. And I hope to see you all again very soon. Till next time, ciao for now.